African Utility Week studio. Today I am speaking to Webmeco, who is the business development uh, director for Sub-Saharan Africa at uh, uh, Black and Beach. Welcome, Web. Thank you for having us here. <laughs> Web, we're going to be talking about uh, trends that are driving transformation in the energy and utility sector. But I believe that you do quite a bit of travel throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. I'd like to first hear from you, what are your experiences in terms of development that are taking place in the different countries? I think there are quite a, a variety of initiatives that are taking place uh, across the sub-Saharan continent. But if you look at uh, uh, the energy infrastructure, there's still quite a lot still to be done. Right. There's still areas where there is a, a deficit in terms of the energy infrastructure and also there's still a long way to go in terms of uh, modernization of uh, energy uh, and increasing access to electricity mm -hmm. to, to the uh, citizens in most of these uh, mm -hmm. sub-Saharan countries. So what has stood out for you uh, when, when you visit countries and you land in that country? What is the first thing that you look for? In fact, the very first thing I look for is the infrastructure, um, the road infrastructure, uh, you know, the energy infrastructure, uh, telecommunications, mm -hmm. uh, and you look at that in terms of, you know, this has got direct impact on the quality of life of, uh, of the people within that country. And those are the first things that I look into. And I think from Black and Vish perspective, you look at that and say, you know, we, we subscribe to the notions of building the world of difference. And when you see such a uh, you know, deficit in terms of infrastructure, you basically say, you know, this is where we can be impactful. Exactly, in, yeah. in terms of our, our, our involvement in the sub-Saharan mm -hmm. Africa. So uh, what are the things that have stood out for you in terms of the challenges that these countries are grappling with? Are there uh, similarities between the countries? There's quite a lot of similarities, although there's a varying degree of uh, the, the, the challenges. You know, but I think uh, modern energy, water infrastructure, telecommunications mm -hmm. are now not uh, one of the most in, important in terms of changing people's life, but also they, they fuel the economy of the country. So when you are having uh, energy shortages, uh, poor quality of uh, uh, energy in terms of outages and power cuts, you know, you immediately would translate that into, you know, impact on the economy, impact on, on, on employment. You know, so those are the, the, the things that really stands out uh, when, you, when you visit the majority of uh, sub-Saharan countries. There's been a lot of talk about uh, off-grid development and mini-grids. Have you seen this taking place? Yes, uh, within Black and Wish we have a distributed generation as one of our uh, business units. And that uh, the objective of that unit is basically trying to develop power energy infrastructure that is modular, that is, uh, uh, can be connected to the grid, can actually operate in island mode without necessarily being connected to the grid. We found that this type of energy uh, solutions tends to bring power much quicker because they are actually using a variety of energy generation modes such as solar PV, battery storage, wind. Uh, they tend to actually make uh, the provision of power and building the infrastructure much quicker than conventional big uh, uh, power facilities such as your big coal power plants or conventional uh, gas, gas power plants. They can go as little as uh, 600 kilowatts to as big as uh, 20 megawatts, you know, depending on the requirement of that load to determine what on, on also what's the intent of that load. But I think it's one of those solutions that will augment uh, the provision of power. They can work uh, in tandem with uh, your big bulk infrastructure, but they can also work uh, by themselves in an island, island mode. Some of them, they, don't, they can actually do black start, so they don't need the support of the grid to be operated. But base load is still something that is going to be needed? Yes, base load is definitely what we require, but these specific plants okay we can actually ensure that the load profile of these plants, based on the solutions that you're providing, can, can cater for base loads, where you are, when you are employing a variety of uh, uh, power generation sources, such as rotating machines, it can be diesel fired. Uh, you can also use battery storage when the sun is uh, no longer available or whatever, renewable energy resources is not available. Because of the, the battery storage, uh, we are then still able to provide power to, to the end user. Exactly. 
So looking at the future, uh, what are your predictions uh, for the energy sector? Uh, maybe something around battery storage that we can look forward to or developing new PPPs? Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the PPPs are one of the models that I think Africa should start embracing and they are embracing uh, we're seeing uh, a lot of initiatives where independent power producers are coming into the countries, various countries, and they're actually developing uh, energy infrastructure uh, and with partnership with government and with partnership with the community within which they will be providing their specific power. It is, becomes a, a very good model which would ensure that we are improving in terms of providing uh, access to electricity. Uh, and do, to do you see developments in the IPP sector coming in the next five years? I think there's a, there's a variety of developments within the independent power producers. Uh, South Africa, through the Renewable Energy Programme, has actually did, did uh, very good work in terms of bringing uh, independent power producers on board. There's se several gigawatts in terms of renewables energy that has been uh, put on, onto the grid. Also, we see now the baseload IPP coming in, uh, coal, coal baseload IPP. We are eagerly waiting the gas to power program, which will, st all these programs will be driven uh, by independent power producers. And we've also seen in uh, Zambia, in terms of the solar uh, uh, program, which is co-developed with the IFC, that uh, at least uh, independent power producers are actually being brought into, into the market. So we are seeing liberalization of the energy sector where traditionally it used to be power utilities that are state owned. Now there is introductions of IPP, they bring in very good balance sheet into the equation, they are able to raise funds to be able to fund these projects where in some instances uh, the government um, balance sheet are stretched. So they play an extremely uh, vital role in the development of the energy infrastructure. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Webb. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I'm Nicolette Pomba Pansail, editor of ESI Africa, coming to you from the African Utility Week Studio.